Shelby County Sheriff's Office pays honor to a fallen veteran. Deputies apprehend shoplifters and detectives locate a missing person. These stories are more with real news with the Shelby County Sheriff's Office. The Delta Fair and Music Festival is in full swing, running from September 1st through September 10th, and the Shelby County Sheriff's Office is out ensuring everyone is safe while attending. Deputies are patrolling the fairgrounds, the parking lots, and the livestock shows alongside our emergency services personnel focusing on safety and attending to medical calls as needed. However, deputies are not just patrolling from the ground, we're also watching from the sky. And here is Detective Nelson to talk about the Sheriff's Office drone program. Shelby County Sheriff's Office has been using UAS, also known as drones, for several years now. Shelby County Sheriff's Office primarily uses them for search and rescue missing persons, but we also use it to help deter crime. We primarily use them to help with fleeing suspects. We use them a lot for people that are taking off running to assist our canines, finding them, and also patrol deputies as well. The Shelby County Sheriff's Office Motors Unit honors a fallen veteran, and here's Deputy Zing to tell you all about it. Chief Petty Officer Norman John Henry enlisted in the U.S. Navy on April 29, 1968 and dedicated almost two decades to serving his country, retiring on November 30, 1987. Chief Henry passed away on February 22, 2021. However, following his death, he was laid to rest in Mumford, Tennessee for over a year because he had no living family to claim him. According to Catherine Markley with the Tipton County Museum, when they were told about Chief Henry, they immediately reached out to the Veteran Service Officer for Tipton County and informed them about Chief Henry. On August 30th, Chief Henry's remains were removed from Krieger Cemetery in Mumford and reburied at West Tennessee Veteran Cemetery in Shelby County. The solemn event of his reburial was attended by the Shelby County Sheriff's Office Motors Unit, which provided an escort to honor his memory and service. Chief Petty Officer Norman John Henry remains unclaimed to this day. Shoplifters tried to give deputies a slip, and here's Detective Hudson with the details. On August 28, 2023, detectives conducted a shoplift and abatement operation in partnership with the loss prevention at the Target retail store in the 600 block of Colonial Road. The loss prevention team contacted the Shelby County Sheriff's Office due to an increase in shoplifting cases at their East Memphis Colonial location. During the operation, Leterica Berry and Alana McKinney were observed passing the point of sale with various Fortnite toys valued at $276 and exited the store with the merchandise. As detectives attempted to apprehend Barry, she attempted to flee and struck the detectives' vehicles while on the parking lot. Detectives arrested Barry and McKinnon and discovered there to be three small toddlers under the age of five inside the car. Alana McKinnon was charged with shoplifting, theft of property under a thousand, Leterica Berry was charged with four counts of aggravated assault, two wit on a law enforcement officer, shoplifting of theft of property under a thousand, vandalism a thousand to twenty five hundred, invading arrest, two wit motor vehicle, and three counts of child abuse and neglect. The abatement operation resulted in a total of four individuals being arrested throughout the day. Back to you, Lieutenant. Scammers prey on unsuspected citizens, and here is Captain Hill from our General Investigation Bureau to explain the danger. Hi. I would like to discuss a couple of different types of internet and phone scams that are going around. The first one I want to discuss is called a grandparent scam. This type of scam is usually cell phone related, though occasionally the perpetrator will call the house phone. Of course, this could happen to anyone, but the caller tries to target elderly relatives. The caller, who is sometimes the scammer, may try to elicit information about relatives without the elderly person even realizing they are giving this information up. At times, the scammer may even pretend to be a relative, and when asked why they hardly sound like that relative, they'll say they have a cold so their voice sounds a little different. The caller may tell the victim that they are with some type of law enforcement agency and are reaching out because the relative, typically a grandchild, has been arrested for some type of crime and the grandparent's name was given as a source of contact. The scammer could also present themselves as the relative's attorney and the incident is from out of town and needs to be handled immediately. The grandparent is then hit up with a request for money in order to pay a fine or bail money for the relative in order to get them out of custody. 
This request could be a couple of hundred dollars or even a thousands of dollars. The caller will want either cash or money gift cards and will even arrange, in their effort to help you, for someone to personally come to the grandparents' home to pick it up in order to make things easier on the grandparents. Of course, all of this is to lull the grandparent into a sense of security and is playing on the emotions of the elderly person in order to help that young relative. Another type of scam on the phone will be if you are advised that you've won some type of prize or a lottery. As the scammer plays on your excitement of winning something, they are also asking for personal information, possibly credit card information, banking account numbers, or even your social security number. The scammer will tell the victim that in order to receive their winnings, the victim will need to send cash to cover the cost of processing fees. Sometimes they will even send you a fake check and then ask that you cash it and send the funds to them for the processing fee. Again, these fees could be several hundred dollars and into the thousands. Should you or a relative ever be contacted by someone who you feel may be trying to separate you from your hard-earned money, please reach out to either another family member for advice and if necessary, please contact your local law enforcement agency. Do you want to help your community? And would you like to know how? Here is Public Information Officer John Morris to tell you all about it. The Shelby County Sheriff's Office currently has openings for school crossing guards for the Shelby County school system. If you are retired, a homemaker, or looking for part-time work, then give us a call. If you're a U.S. citizen and 21 years of age or older, possess a valid Tennessee driver's license, and you can pass a background check, then you are who we are looking for. We will train you to direct the movement of vehicles, children, and pedestrians at designated Shelby County School Street Crossings to ensure safe crossing for children. The work hours are generally two hours in the morning and two hours in the afternoon on regular school days, and the pay is $17.31 an hour. If you have any interest, please contact Deputy Roosevelt Moore at 901-222 5753 or email Moore at shelby-sheriff.org. From the PIO office of the Shelby County Sheriff's Office, thank you for tuning in and until next time, stay safe Shelby County.